Welcome back to Public Affairs on Peach, and we are looking at how Clayton County is ahead of the curve when it comes to preventing sex trafficking, and certainly fighting sex trafficking is extremely important. And we now have um, these individuals who have been with me since the beginning of the show, and I tell you, ladies, what you were doing, because we were talking about this earlier, what you all are doing is to be commended because you've got the hiding place and this is why these gift bags are here the hiding place have got an event next week but more importantly you've got to tell me a little bit about the hiding place before we get to why these bags are up here and who these bags are for so talk a little bit about that the hiding place part of our job is to raise awareness in the community and part of those um, community members are faith-based so what we do is we reach out to all of our churches and we met the director of hiding place candy wurzerberger and she advised us that she was actually on the streets with her ministry, ministering to people in the local hotels, trying to provide resources, preaching to them, food, clothing, those type of things, trying to get them in the faith-based part of it to get off the street. So that's just one more angle um, that we reach out as a community to teach and raise awareness. And Joanne, what's in these bags? And I know you've got one for m boys and one for girls. And talk a little bit about that because they are chock full of good stuff. Yes, this is one of our big events um, this year. Um, this bag right here is the girl hygiene items, fleece blanket. Um, this one here is for our boys. Uh, we, our goal was 25, but because of our community response, yeah. Amazing. I think we have enough for 100 bags. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Wednesday at 6 o'clock at the Rainbow House on Battle Creek, we're going to be having uh, an event where the community and the donors can come together and we get to stuff the bags. Mm. So we get to house them here at the Rainbow House and then distribute them to the victims of uh, child sex trafficking in the community. You know what? I think it is extremely important to point out that some of these victims are boys, and I know we were just talking about this during the break. And so, Sherelle, as you look at your nephews and boys that are in all of our lives and young men, that's important for people to recognize that as well. Yes, because typically when we think of sex trafficking, we think of the girls, and everybody focuses the attention on the girls. But that's not always the case. We have boys that are out here that are being sexually exploited. Um, and so sometimes when you have a nephew, a cousin, just a friend, you look at them and you say, oh, they're fine, they're a boy, boys are gonna be boys, but that's not always the case. And so what Joanne has done with the gift bags is to go out in the community and not only say, hey, take a look at the girls, but take a look at the boys. And sometimes they need help. And sometimes they're, they're crying out and we don't realize it because that's not the typical example of a child being sexually exploited. Exactly. What about these predators? Do they hang around schools? What do people need to watch for when you start talking about these kinds of predators? I would say your indicators are, you need to know what your kid's doing. You need to be there, you need to be present. Um, the indicators change different, different social uh, groups, different housing arrangements for people, but you're talking about grooming from the school, you're talking about online, Facebook, um, all the social media sites. You're actually talking about when they run away, they're just, picked up by some good looking young guy where they think, hey, I'm gonna go get something to eat and next thing you know, they're being trafficked. And can I just add this? Because I don't know about when y'all were coming up, but when I was coming up, there was no such thing as privacy. You know, in our parents' house, we were just renting, <laughs> right? So there was no such thing as, oh, mom, I don't want you in my stuff or I don't want you. As a parent today, you need to make sure, when you talk about being present, you need to make sure you know, really know, what's on that Facebook page, who they're talking to online. Those are the kinds of things you're really making sure of, correct? Correct. Absolutely. Correct. Even at Rainbow House, our children who live there, it is important for us to know what's going on with them. You know, they're, they're foster children, but at the same time, we are raising them. It is our duty at Rainbow House, Joanne and the rest of my staff at Rainbow House, to see about them. And so we're constantly looking into Facebook. We're checking notebooks because you never know. You never know what's going on. And a lot of times, this is taking place at school, and that's the reason why Rainbow House was able to partner with Clayton County Public Schools on this grant. Yeah. Is the problem worse now than it was, say, 10, 15, 20 years ago? or is it better with technology? I think it's because of people like you that do stories that people talk about it a little bit more. I don't think the stats show it's any different than it was five years ago. It's just you see it more because people watch the news more. Mm. Awareness. 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 That is key. Yes. That is key. 
That is great. So when we come back, we will definitely be talking to Clayton County since we hear so much about it. And an officer, several officers actually in particular, and their efforts really to crack down on child exploitation. Back in a moment.